Hmm. Hey, Bubba. Oh, I have to stop. Stand up. Stop. You want mommy to stand up? You got a lot of toys in here, buddy. You got so many toys in your room. You find something cool to play with? You find a cool puzzle? Hey, what's that? What is this? Kato. Hey. What's this? Go. Look at mommy. What's this? Gorilla. What is this? Giraffe and elephant. Good job. You love animals. <laughs> Goofball. <laughs> hey guys, what is up? Welcome to today's vlog. So today, me and Kadell are spending the day at Grandma and Big Eye's house. Kadell is sitting right next to me, playing with his toys, lining up his animals, eating pretzels, doing what he loves to do, just having a blast and enjoying his life, living his best life. So today I thought it would be fun to talk to you guys about the evolution of Kadell's speech and language development. It has been quite the long journey. Kadell was nonverbal for the first six and a half years of his life. Um, and honestly, I never knew if I was going to hear his voice or not. I never knew if he was going to be able to form words or say mommy or say his own name or be able to communicate his basic wants and needs verbally. So what we did was when he was first diagnosed at the age of two, shortly after that, closer to three, we started him in ABA. And it was definitely a tough decision for me. I knew nothing about autism. I knew nothing about ABA. And I just didn't know where to start, you know. Um, his Come. pediatrician that diagnosed him recommended that I look into ABA, Come that it was a pretty common form of therapy for children on the spectrum. And so I looked into it. I wasn't sure about it. I was skeptical of it. I didn't want to pull him from his routine that, you know, he was in and it was all we knew, which was pretty much, you know, daycare and he was about to start preschool the next year. So I was torn. I didn't know what to do. Table? 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 Okay, you can go to the table. Go ahead, baby. Let's play in table. here. Table. You don't need the table. Table. Mommy's letting you have snacks in table. here today. Table. Pillow. Pillow. Table. Table. Go Bathroom. ahead, buddy. Bathroom. Wow, you're really talking today. <laughs> okay, so I will finish without him because I think he is just bored of this room and ready to move on. So anyway, so it was a difficult decision, but I decided to, you know, take a leap of faith and try ABA and see if it helped him. And it was the best decision that I believe I have, I have ever made as a parent. So we started ABA, they started really focusing on his communication skills, which at the time he had none. It was a guessing game. I totally had to just, you know, try to satisfy him and guess what he wanted. And I had to just, it was just trial and error. It was a guessing game. It was really hard on both ends. And he's back. <laughs> and the dog's back too. Okay. So, um, what was I Okay, so what they decided to do in ABA was to start him on a picture exchange communication system, which is PEX. And PEX is a specifically um, designed program. Like, there's steps that you have to go in order, and you have to be trained on how to teach PEX. And I was not trained. His therapist was. 
I would always recommend, you know, trying to seek out the help of an expert when you're trying to, you know, teach a program. And PEX was a program. So we started with um, pictures and ordered him, you know, like a three ring binder and it had the Velcro and the pages and all that stuff. And started out with something really simple and something that he was highly motivated for, which at the time was candy. I mean, okay sorry there's a lot going on here today so like i was saying kdl is very highly motivated for candy and he always has been and especially as a three-year-old child what three-year-old child doesn't want candy so he would figure out a way to get his point across to get the message across that he wanted candy so they used that to their advantage they started off with a small picture of candy and put it on the front of his three ring binder So he would just get the picture of the candy, hand it to the therapist, and do that over and over until he started picking up on the concept of that give and take exchange, which is, you know, him communicating. So then from there, once he mastered that, they would move the picture to, you know, a different spot, like on the front of the binder. And he would still have to take the picture give it to them and he would get his candy. And then he would do that over and over and keep practicing until he got the hang of it. Then they would make it a little bit more difficult, put it on the inside of the three ring binder so he had to flip open the page, get the picture, hand it to the therapist, and he would get his candy. practice, practice, practice over and over and over. Then after that, he, they would make it even more challenging to where they would put it, you know, on a page with a whole bunch of other pictures on it. So he would have to discriminate that candy picture specifically that he wanted that specific picture and that's what he wanted. And he would have to pick it out with within a bunch of other pictures. So he would open the binder, find the candy picture, hand it to the therapist, get his candy. And it's just that practice, practice over and over until he starts to associate, you know, picking the picture of whatever it is he wants, giving it to the therapist, and that's him communicating. And they just, like I said, started with candy because it was an easy way to start because he was so motivated for it and then they just kind of expanded from there to you know juice or pretzels um lots of food items because that's what kiddo really likes but then you know throwing in toys into the mix and different toys and different movies he likes to watch and things like that chase there was a picture of chase picture of tickles you know whatever it is that kiddo likes and he's motivated by um and then as he grew older and the concept became a little more second nature to him, the pictures just expanded and exploded to where he had this big, huge binder full of tons of pictures that he would use to communicate. the start of it all for Kato. And then from there, we moved to a tablet because the PEX system that I was telling you about had an app, which very closely mimicked the three ring binder method. So it was a pretty easy transition for him. The pages kind of flipped on the app similar to the way that they would in real life. And it was pretty smooth. So he moved to the PEX app and we were able to get all of the same pictures downloaded onto there. And it, you know, it was really nice because the picture would say it for him. 
so he would hear it every time he went to pull the picture on the app. Um, he'd have to click on it and it would say it for him. It was really cool because he would he got that practice and that repetition of hearing it through the app, the word through the app over every time he wanted it. It would say, you know, candy for him. And so that was pretty cool. And I think that that is what bridged the gap for him as far as learning to talk. Because he started talking, like I said, when he was six and a half, his first words were cookie and chase. And he kind of said them both at the same time. And at first, I did not think it was intentional. I was like, did I hear what I think I just heard? And then it very quickly became apparent that it was so intentional. And it was more of an approximation. It wasn't very clear. It wasn't like cookie. It was more of, like I said, an approximation or, you know, a sound. Like, I don't remember what it was, but it was more like a sound that sounded like cookie. But we knew it was. And so from from there on, you know, we got him in speech. And speech is working on his pronunciation of words. It's still difficult to understand his words sometimes. But... We're just, you know, practicing and learning as we go. And speech has been great in helping him to pronunciate those words. So he's doing really good. He's got a huge vocabulary. For the most part, it's all just mans and labeling. Mans is like an ABA term for request. So, you know, him wanting a drink or water or whatever, um, you know, to take a bath, stuff like that. It's, it's mostly requests. It's not really express, expressive language yet. It's not really him expressing himself. You know, he doesn't tell me I'm hungry or, you know, I'm in pain. Things like that he doesn't express, which still makes communication a big barrier for us. But the fact that he can say his basic wants and needs is like such a big deal. So we're really thankful that he's progress as much as he has and he's doing amazing so I can hear him in the background he's getting into something there is something that he's getting into so I'm gonna go save the day so he doesn't get in trouble with grandma and big guy mostly grandma because big guy wouldn't care <laughs> um and then I don't know what we're gonna do. Probably go bike riding or go to the park. So I'll bring you guys along with us and try to show you some more of his speech. What are you doing? Wait, turn the lights on. What are you doing? I'm suspicious. They're trying to push me out, which makes me suspicious. Ooh. What are you doing in here? Uh -huh. Oh, lights off. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, you're just climbing. That's not a big deal. You're just climbing. What a pest. Wonder pets? What a pest is. Hello? What a pest. Hello? Open. 
and some applesauce. Good job. Just, just one. Two. No, not two. Just one. Good job. Just one. Good job. Maybe that's going to be Polly's cabinet. Whatever. <laughs> Polly who? Two. Cous, Okay, you guys, so we've had a really good day. We just went and got some dinner and ran a few errands with Grandma, and Kidel is currently sitting back there munching on some gummy bears because he ate all of his dinner, and he's been such a good boy today. I could not be more proud of him. But um, a few last things, I guess, that I want to say about um, speech and language development and just kind of in general with nonverbal, minimally verbal kids on the spectrum adults on the spectrum, um, you know, like, whatever. I, like. I would just suggest, you know, don't, I did not mean earlier to say that you have to do it under the control of a trained professional because you don't. If you are just trying to communicate with somebody, you know, like if you're a first responder, if you are, you know, in a situation where you're trying to communicate with somebody, it's always a good idea if you you know, to use pictures. Sometimes I don't know what kiddo wants, but I think I do. So I'll pull up a picture on my phone and I'll give him like, I'll screenshot a couple of different options of what I think he's trying to say and I'll let him pick. And sometimes that works and he will pick the one that he wants. So just some simple ideas like that, you know, use pictures. Um, personally, we never did sign language for kiddo because when he was starting out, it was just too much focus for him to learn signs so pictures was more appropriate for him at the time um, because it's more simple you just grab the picture it doesn't take that much coordination or um, you know focus to learn the specific signs it's just it was easier for him at the time but anyways you know it's always a good idea to take the lead of a professional especially if you're trying to go through a program like we were trying to go through the PEX program, but you don't have to do that to communicate with somebody that is minimally verbal. You know, pull out pictures on your phone. Um, I know I've spoken to police officers before that have like a, um, you know, a, like a poster board almost in their patrol car and they have like several different options of pictures and, you know, if they happen to run into somebody that is, you know, developmentally or delayed or, um, you know, minimally verbal, they'll use that. So it's always a great idea. But anyways, I feel like I'm rambling. Me and Kiddo have had a terrific day. I'm so proud of him and all his communicating and good behaviors he had today. So we will see you guys next vlog. Kiddo, can you say bye? bye. Say bye. Say see you later. Let me love. <laughs>